Well, howdy, folks. Today we're going to talk about a sensitive topic, how we poop. Yes, we've been getting a lot of questions about how we poop up here at the cabin. So today we're going to go through the whole messy business and show you exactly what we do with our waste. Come on along. <music> So the journey of waste management at the off-grid property begins in the tiny cabin. Uh, we do have this little water closet just uh, inside the door. And for those of you that don't know, I just realized uh, as I started doing these videos, not everybody knows what a water closet is. A water closet is just a very small room with a toilet in it. Uh, maybe it's a British term, which is why us Canadians know it and you Americans don't. Uh, but that's basically all we're talking about is a tiny little room uh, with a toilet. So that's what we've got here. So this uh, is just a bucket toilet. It is not even a composting toilet. And we can talk a bit about that as well. A lot of people ask us about composting toilets and whether we use a composting toilet up here at the cabin. Um, at this point, we do not uh, use a composting toilet, commercial or otherwise. Um, and the reason is we just can't really justify the investment of a thousand to fifteen hundred dollar toilet uh, for as often as we're, you know, making use of a toilet up here. So uh, we don't live here full time. This is a recreational property for us and we're here maybe 125 days out of the year or something like that. So if we were to uh, live up here full time, we would certainly um, uh, consider uh, composting toilets as uh, something that uh, we could use up here. But at this point, the investment of a uh, composting toilet just, just isn't worth it for us. So for us, we just use these yellow buckets. These are old detergent buckets. And uh, we'll come in here. This whole seat flips right up, like so. And the bucket literally just goes down inside. That flips back down. And now we've got a fairly decent place to rest our butts. And have a pee. So as I've mentioned, this uh, system is really designed for number ones only, kind of emergency things. Uh, harkens back to the day of the old, uh, of the old bed pans, <laughs> which we also have. Um, and uh, so yeah, really just for number ones uh, in the middle of the night, again, minus 40, blowing snow, you know, freezing cold outside. Last thing anybody wants to do is jump out of their warm bed, go outside to pee. So uh, this provides a little bit of convenience uh, for those cold nights and that sort of thing. Well, once we've dumped it out, we can just bring it back to the back of the cabin here where we're collecting some water and give it a little rinse. Fresh as a daisy. On the occasion that uh, somebody's come along who uses toilet paper for their number ones, uh, that's not a problem. We can just dump that bucket uh, in the outhouse that we have in the woods uh, instead of just uh, on the ground in the woods and take care of it that way. What about that outhouse, you might ask? Well, let's go have a look at that. So we put the outhouse out in the woods because, well, everyone likes a little privacy when they're doing their business. Not only did we put it in the woods, we put it facing out into the woods, thanks to a suggestion by my buddy Dave. Thanks, Dave. So we built this outhouse the first year uh, that we owned the property, and uh, it was just a way to get, make sure we could spend as much time out here as we wanted to without having to run back to the uh, cabin uh, that mom and dad still owned at the time. 
So, uh, yeah, we were uh, finding that we'd come out here and the boys would, you know, halfway through a hike, need to uh, do uh, number two and uh, have a bathroom. So we'd uh, run back to the cabin and then it was sometimes hard to get them motivated to come back out again uh, once they were back there. So uh, we built this and figured we're going to need one anyway. And it has become obviously the uh, number one uh, uh, place for waste on our property. Uh, the hole in it is uh, four feet deep, four and a half feet deep, and about two feet wide, which is a heck of a hole to dig when it's hard clay like what we have here. Uh, so it did take a while to dig that hole. Um, and then we put down a uh, treated uh, base for it to all to sit on and then built the frame of it from there um, and uh, covered it in uh, plywood that's uh, stained the same way that the cabin is, just a good outdoor uh, uh, stain and uh, it's lasted a good long while. This is its third or fourth year, I guess, fourth year um, standing here and we've had really no issues with it at all. Um, it's been a good outhouse for us. The outhouse door is latched just with a simple locking mechanism such as that. Keep it simple. And the door is a two-piece door which we can unlatch and move the top half aside so that you can sit inside and view the luxury of the woods while doing your business. And trust me, you'll want to do that because it is beautiful. So this is the main place uh, for number two business. Um, we don't uh, have a composting toilet, as I said, in the cabin, and so um, all your uh, all your waste uh, is handled by this outhouse, and it's worked pretty well. So um, the pit is about four and a half feet deep and two feet wide, and uh, we can actually have that cleaned out by the uh, local. Uh, uh, sanitary uh, folks uh, who do uh, the septic tanks around here and so they can come and clean that out if it ever gets full and uh, it's not too much of a problem that way so um, it should last us a good long while uh, we cleaned it up with uh, some nice uh, pine boards inside so once you're done your business we have a uh, scoop here that typically either has uh, wood ash or uh, better yet uh, some uh, sawdust and uh, we'll just uh, sprinkle that uh, down the hole over top of your uh, business and that uh, usually takes care of uh, most of the odor in here um, this is probably the best smelling outhouse I've ever uh, been in uh, we really don't have an issue uh, three years in with it four years in now uh, with uh, with odor um, and I guess that's probably due to the fact that we do try and cover uh, our waste every time and not leave it uh, leave it just to the air uh, we also leave the lid up uh, and that allows the the uh, gases to sort of uh, escape and not uh, just dwell down in there and sort of collect and then we've got some air vents uh, at the back there as well as at the front here that are just covered in screen and uh, that screen keeps the critters out from uh, building homes in here while we're not around and um, uh, allows the air to uh, sort of flow through which is uh, uh, I, I guess the reason that we don't have uh, too much smell in here. So it's been a good little outhouse for us. As far as washing up when you're done goes, I've built this little wash station just uh, back at the camper, uh, which is in the yard. And you just flip that little lid up there and then you've got uh, a little bucket of water here and some soap to wash up and clean yourself up after your business is all done in the outhouse. Well, there it is, folks. You asked for it, you got it. That's how we poop. Uh, I hope that answers some of the questions around waste management. It is a concern for off-grid, uh, um, you know, properties and, and off-grid uh, places. You know, how are you going to deal with that waste? So that's how we do it up here. And uh, if uh, this helped you out at all, then uh, I'd appreciate to click a like or a subscribe button or have a comment below if you have any other questions, something I didn't cover. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.